Good evening. This is Jonathan Clem from Phoenix, Arizona, Apostle Jonathan, and this is Command Your Evening. Praise God. We're talking to people all around the country. We have a phone line here from uh, the East Coast, uh, mainly in Connecticut and North Carolina and South Carolina, Florida, Texas. We have our friends from uh, Facebook that are watching us from Alabama and around the country. Oh, there's a mighty woman of God. Connie Stone, Apostles Henry Knox, oh praise God. Thank you so much for joining me. Hallelujah. What we're going to talk about tonight is uh, some things that I consider very interesting. Praise God. We've been watching and, and asking God, this is command your evening. So in a way, uh, we're looking at uh, the ways that we can speak commands. We can uh, make confident declarations praise God and we know that God hears us and it's important but I also want to look tonight uh, Nehemiah tells us a number of things about what it was like when he uh, got permission from the king and he made a declaration all the kinds of challenges he met after that some of us have come to the, the conclusion uh, somehow from I think it's our naivete and experience that uh, making declarations and uh, preaching for God and prophesying for God means we're not going to have any challenges. And I think that Scripture will bear truth that uh, that's you know far from the truth. The devil is watching us. The devil is looking out at us. And the more you grow in God, the more uh, people will be going, are you kidding me? Forget that. So I want to take a look tonight after we pray and just kind of look at some of the things that have happened. Praise God. But of course, we look at Jesus, you know, the author and finisher of our faith. Praise God. He knows what, what it's like and he knows the persecution that sometimes we have to go through. Hallelujah. And, you know, also Paul had a, had a great testimony at the end of his ministry. So we want to look at uh, commanding our evenings, commanding uh, God's will for our lives, but we also want to look at the price sometimes that it that it takes. Hallelujah. We don't want to be naive. We don't want to be frustrated. We don't want to even be surprised that the devil's causing us trouble sometimes. Hallelujah. But we want to serve the living God and do all that it takes to complete the task that he's given us. You know, there was one uh, prophet that was uh, given a message and he said I want you to go to the king and I want you to give him this warning and judgment he says whatever you do don't stop along the way don't eat their food don't get involved with anybody you just go there and come back and so he went there and he said you know I have a word for you you may not like it but I have to deliver the word so he gave the king the word the king did not like it, for it was a, a, a judgment. And he was on his way back, and there was a prophet in the land that said, I saw an angel of God. And now, you know, what is it? What trumps what, you know? And, and the truth is, what you hear from God, you're responsible for. You aren't responsible for what somebody else hears, unless it's in the Holy Scripture. You're responsible for what you hear. And so, he, this prophet listened to the begging of the other prophet and said okay I'll come with you and they went to the other he went to the older prophet's house and he sat down and had dinner with him and then he revealed that the uh, the prophecy he got was actually a lie and on the way home the prophet that had done what God asked in the first place but didn't follow through on it he was eaten by a lion Wow, sometimes the challenges, the specifics of what God says to do, he says, do them, and that's all you do. And we got to be careful that we're not tricked by other people's interpretations, other people's uh, attitudes. Or we want to, if the Lord says, I command you to do this, you declare it out of your mouth, and you have to follow through on it. Praise God. We know from experience, we know from Scripture that there will be challenges along the way. So I'm going to pray for our strength, for our uh, backbone, for, you know, there's a new channel on on, uh, on our TV set uh, in the last year or two. And it's a, a channel, it has the stories of men with backbone, you know, and I think the church needs a little of that these days. We need some men and women that have backbone. If God says do it, we're going to do it. If God says go, we go. If God says wait, we wait. 
Amen. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for commanding our evening. We thank you for the lessons that you're teaching us all along the way. We thank you for uh, Prophet Tina and uh, Cynthia and Francesca and the different ones that are watching tonight. Hallelujah on Facebook and on Periscope and are on the phone with me. Hallelujah. We bless you, O God. Hallelujah. We declare thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We praise you, O God. Hallelujah. We also pray thy kingdom come, but we also say, give us this day our daily bread. And I pray for my brothers and sisters that you will have plenty, that you will have daily bread and all that you need and enough to share uh, left over in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to start at the beginning, but before I get to the beginning, I want to start um, back at... Uh, I'm in Nehemiah, okay? And in Nehemiah chapter 6 is where we really get into the, to the, the flux of the matter, if you will. Hallelujah. And he says, I will finish the work that the Lord has given me to do. Okay, I will finish the work that the Lord has given me to do. And that's what our that's what I hope we can declare and decree over our lives tonight. Amen. I will finish the work that the Lord has given to me. How to do it to do. Praise God. Isn't it important that we finish the work? Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus wants us to do a good work. The Father wants us to do a good work. He sent the Holy Spirit that we would be empowered to do the good work. Do you know the story of Nehemiah? Praise God. Just to kind of give you a, 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 a paraphrase beginning, uh, Nehemiah uh, was serving the king as his cupbearer, and he heard about Jerusalem. He heard that the walls were torn down. He heard that, the, that it was just a mess there, and that the people had had gone away from God and weren't serving him. And he just wept and he called upon God and he, and he confessed the sins of Israel and he cried over Jerusalem, that great city. Hallelujah. He cried over and broke his heart and then he reminded God. And this is always an important prayer if you want to get your prayers answered. He reminded God of his promises. He said, Lord, you said when we built the temple that wherever we were, if we were scattered around the world, that if we would stop and realize where we are and call upon you in this place and call upon you and ask you to deliver us, you would save us, you would hear our prayers, and you would bring us back to this great land and you would restore us. Hallelujah. And so he's reminding God of a promise already. That's where we can have strength in our prayers. When we find a promise and we can remind God, this is your word. Hallelujah. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Praise God. So we know that God is mighty. He says, by your stripes we are healed. So when we have sickness, we take that scripture. Lord, you said in your word, oh, that you would heal us. By your stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. And we remind God of his word, for he is an honorable God. Hallelujah. But let's have mercy on us, Lord. We have some interruptions here. Forgive me. Praise God. The Lord is in our midst and he is good. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. If you'll turn with me uh, to the book of Nehemiah chapter 2, uh, I want to get to verse 20 here. He was being challenged by these other guys. Uh, verse 19, Sanballat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian, heard that they were going to rebuild this city. And they mocked him and said, what, in the, what is this thing you're going to do? Are you rebelling against the king? And of course, he had already gotten favor from the king. He had gone before the king. Not only had he gotten favor, but he asked him, how long will your journey be? When are you going to come back? And he gave him a time. And then he pressed it a little bit further with the hand of the Lord upon him and said, uh, if it please the king, let letters be given to the governors beyond the river that they may con convey me over till I come into Judah. And so they were going there. And uh, verse 9 says in chapter 1, 
uh, or verse, chapter 2, Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. So, I mean, he really had the favor of the king on his side. Isn't that awesome? Uh, you talk about faith. He cried out and prayed before God, and the king saw his countenance, and the Lord answered by giving him favor. Praise God. But here in verse 20, when he's getting challenged by these other people and these other governors, he says, Then answered I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we his servants will arise and build. But you have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Praise God. He actually declared two things. One is they were going to arise and they were going to build and they were going to do the job that that they were called to and that God was going to prosper them. But he also declared the second thing, and that is you outsiders, you doubters, you unbelievers, you're not going to have any portion nor right nor memorial in Jerusalem. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's the declaration that Nehemiah made. Hallelujah. Has God given you a work to do? Has God given you a plan? And you maybe said, it's too hard, it's too difficult. I don't know if I can even get started. Maybe he's given you a plan and you don't have any money. Maybe he's given you a plan and you don't have any people. Maybe he's given you a plan and you don't have any land. You just have an idea from God. Hallelujah. That's where we call upon the Lord and we make our declarations. Hallelujah. Let's look at that declaration again. Then I answered to these foreigners, the God of heaven, hmm, Ooh, I love that. The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. How to do it. We are going to arise and build. He's going to prosper us. And that's all there is to it. How to do it. And you go on. But you have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. You know, it's important to establish what you're going to build. How to do it. And when I think of building a church, when I think of building a, a kingdom of God, it takes both of those things. One, it takes the courage, it takes the people, it takes a lot of things to get something built. But when you build it, you don't want all the haters there with you. You don't want all the, the, the doubters there with you. You want the kingdom of God to be established. Amen? Praise God. Lord, I pray right now that we would have strength in the inner man, that when you give us a word, we will do our best to see it through. We will be like Jesus, who could say on the cross, it is finished. Hallelujah. We could say like Paul, I have run the course, I have finished the race. There is set up for me a crown, oh, in heaven. Oh, with my name on it. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for those that have gone before us. Hallelujah. And have finished the course and run the race and done well. And like Jesus says, it is finished. Hallelujah. There's a, I know I could preach this for a couple of days, but there's some things that I, I found along here that I really wanted to bring out uh, that's so interesting. Nehemiah 4.1 uh, but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth, and he took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews? You know, who the heck are they? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Oh my goodness, can you, they're just, they can't believe that you have the audacity to do something for God. And now Tobiah the Ammonite was with him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. They're praying to their God. Oh my goodness. Isn't that just like the enemy? In verse 7, But it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth and conspired all of them to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. First they sent them a letter, then, they, then they're ready to fight them. 
Uh, can you believe the, the pushback? People do not want you to fulfill your call. People do not want you to accomplish all that God has in mind for you. And so when we give uh, a declaration, we have to know it's from God and we have to stand on it. There will be people that are talking behind your back. There will be people that will talk to your face. There will be people that will conspire against you. They had to build half of the wall with a sword in one hand and brick and mortar in the other hand. They had to have half of the people in army clothes and the other half building the wall. I mean, this was quite a fight. Uh, chapter 5, it says, And there was a great cry of the people and of the wives against their brethren, the Jews, for there were that said, We are sons and our daughters are many. Therefore we take up corn for them that we may eat and live. Some also there that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses that we might buy corn because of the dearth. There were also that said, We have borrowed money for the king's tribute and that upon our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children, and lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants, and some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. Can you imagine this? Here they were trying to do the work of God, and there were men and women of their own group, their own Israelites, that were actually charging them usury. They were charging them huge amounts of interest. They were even requiring them to sell their sons and daughters into slavery. Oh, you know, sometimes I think about the church, I think about Israel, and I'm going, are you kidding me? What kind of godliness is that? And that's exactly what Nehemiah said. And this takes great leadership. Praise God. Nehemiah heard this, and he didn't go into council for a week and, and call upon this or that. Listen to his reaction here. And I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. Then I consulted with myself. And I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them, You exact usury, every one of his brother. And I said a great assembly against them. All he did was consult with himself. He rebuked nobles, he rebuked rulers, and he put them up in a great assembly. And basically what he's saying is he's mocking them openly. He's rebuking them openly. And I, verse 8 and I, of uh, chapter 5, Ah, oh, and I said unto them, We, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. And will ye even sell your brethren? Or shall ye, they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. Boy, he got on them so much that they didn't have a word to say back. Yeah, that is great leadership. He takes on nobles. He takes on leaders. He's saying, You're going to do what's right by God. Hallelujah. Verse 9, And I said, It is not good that you do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? I likewise and my brethren and my servants might exact of them money and corn. I pray you, let us leave off this usury. Restore, I pray to you, to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, and their houses, also the hundredth part of the money and of the corn and the wine and the oil that ye exact of them. And they said, We will restore them, and we will require nothing of them. So we will do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Praise God. He took on the challenge of the nobles and the leaders too. He said, You are not going to treat my people, God's people, with indignity. You are not going to treat them with disdain. You are going to treat them right. And I'm going to have the servants of God verify that you have agreed to this. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is that a man after God's own heart? You see, he declared and decreed, we're going to do this thing and we're going to do it right. And he said, we're not going to do it right if we're putting too big of a burden on our fellow brethren. Praise God. Let that sink in. Mm. 
And then he also says that he used to have 150 people at his table for dinner. The, the nobles and rulers, some of them. He had all kinds of people, some of the outsiders. And he never uh, used the governor's money to do it. He was able to provide for all those people and listed all the, the cattle and sheep and birds and all the food that he had there. It was a tremendous amount of food. But he wouldn't use the governor's money. Praise God. They were going to do this the right way, with the right heart, with the right promise. And then how did this happen? Because they prayed unto God, called on God. God gave a blessing to the king, and they declared and decreed, we are going to make this work. We have the favor of God. How did he? But they're getting pushed back. They're getting pushed back from the enemy. They're getting pushed back from their neighbors. They're getting pushed back from their own rulers. How did he? Verse 6. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem came unto me saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? While I, while I leave it and come down to you. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Have you had people that were calling you to do this and calling you to do that, trying to get you distracted? I think in America and even around the world, we live in the days of distractions. People are going to say, come spend some time over here. Come talk to us. But if God has given us a work to do, hallelujah, we have to stand on that promise. We have to stand on that declaration. We have to stand on the work that God has given us to do. There are times to relax, but there are times to get the job done. And we've got to put our blinders on and say, I am following the Lord. I declared and decree, but I also understand that I'm going to have to see this thing through. How to do it. I'm going to have distractions. I'm going to have people pulling me this way and that way. I'm going to have people... Uh, trying to burn bridges out from under me. I'm going to have people talking. I'm going to have people get ready for war. And we're going to have to have one sword in one hand and, and work with the other hand. Hallelujah. But I am going to get this thing done. Praise God. And if you'll go with me, keep on going in chapter 6. Mm. He, he, the sand ballad and them even sent uh, prophets unto them and began to prophesy in verse 12. And lo, I perceive that God had not sent them, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me for Tobiah and sand ballad had hired him. Therefore was he hired that I should not be afraid and do so in sin and that they might have matter for an evil report that they might reproach me. Here they're even sending false prophets his way to make him think that God's in this now. Mm. So at verse 15, verse 15 says it all. So the wall was finished in the 20 and 5th day of the month, Elul, in 50 and 2 days. He went down there and he worked. And he would not get distracted. He would not allow these things. And they finished the wall in 52 days. I mean, that is fast in today's standards. Much less... In their, stay, in their day and age, these guys went to work. They went to make things happen. They had a promise from God. They declared and decreed that they were going to make it happen according to the favor of God, and they did it in record time. Hallelujah. Praise God. And what did the people say? Oh, moreover in those days. Hmm. Or verse 16. And it came to pass that when all of our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Hallelujah. Now the enemies are looking down on themselves. Now they feel bad for what they've done. Now they said, this work was wrought of our God. 
Hallelujah. That's the testimony that we want, isn't it? That's the testimony I believe God has for you. As you make a declaration and you make a decree, as God speaks something to your heart and say, I'm going to go do this work, you are not going to say, I am not going to allow distractions to get the better of me. I have the favor of God and I am going to do the work that God's called me to. I'm going to finish strong. Hallelujah. I am going to run the race. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish the way the Lord has spoken to me. Hallelujah. Let's turn to, real quick as we finish up tonight, 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Praise God. If you have your Bibles there, 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Paul is speaking to uh, Timothy, and he's giving them a charge, telling, you know, sometimes you're going to have to rebuke, sometimes you're going to have to bless, all these different things. But in verse 6, he says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown, a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also, that love his appearance. Praise God. That is going. That is my prayer for you and for me. How to do, that at the end of our days, the end of our lives, we can say with Paul, I have fought the good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I believe that you are called of God to be strong and of good courage. You are called of God to be men and women of faith. Hallelujah. As you make your declarations and decrees according to God's plan and his call on your life, hallelujah, then follow that up with work. Follow that up with diligence. Do not let the distractions of this life tear you down. Never let go of the vision that God has given you. Never let go, hallelujah, for God has given you his blessing. Hallelujah. God has given you his touch. God is with you and in you. Hallelujah. If you've heard God accurately, stand on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Put on the full armor of God. And when you've done everything, stand. Hallelujah. Sometimes the enemy's going to come at you with words. Sometimes he's going to come at you with a sword. Sometimes he's going to come at you with doubts and fears and everything else in the world. But you stand tall. You stand strong. You represent the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And your testimony is going to be the same as Nehemiah's. Even the enemies will fear God and say, this was truly done by God. Hallelujah. I pray for you tonight that you would walk in faith, that you would walk in strength, that you would not be surprised by the reaction of the enemy when he comes to discourage, when he comes to doubt, when he comes to distract, but you will be strong and of good courage. You know the enemy's out to distract. You already know that this is going to happen, so you're not going to be surprised. You're going to walk by faith and not by sight. You're going to see the power of God accomplish these things that God has given you to do. How to do you? Whether it's one thin book or a whole volume of books that the Lord has given you to accomplish. How to do you? Whether he's given you uh, two talents or three talents or five talents. Whether he's given you a little money or a lot of money. Whether he's given you a little wisdom or a lot of wisdom. How to do you? We pray that God will use you where you are in your calling to complete the work he's done. And you will be blessed. You will receive that crown of righteousness. How to do you? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Remember, this is Command Your Evening with Apostle Jonathan Clem. I'm here um, Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. And then we're also on the Prophets Teaching Group uh, Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time and 5 o'clock West Coast Time. God bless you, we love you, and make it a great day. Amen.